because we um, also then need to talk about molecular polarity. I think the polarity of bonds is an easy concept for you to understand. You've already had um, experience with it, okay? Um, my, did you talk about it last year with Kernosh, the polarity of bonds? Okay, well, whatever. Um, if you did or didn't, it doesn't matter. So here's the way that I think this is easiest to describe. Okay. Um, I think that a way to think about polarity is that you're describing, whoops, sorry, this isn't my iPad, so my settings aren't there. Okay. You're really describing the pull, okay? Like that's what polarity means. You're referring to the pull on the shared pairs of electrons, okay? That's really what polarity is, okay? Um, oops. I like to think of it really simply as like a tug of war game, okay? You have two atoms sharing a pair of electrons and like really a ruler is a very effective uh, thing to use because what do you draw when you're showing a shared pair? A line. So here's your line. And that line represents electrons. And electrons are positive or negative. negative. And here's a negative symbol. So you can really visualize a lot with a ruler, right? OK. Um, so here's the deal. It's like a tug of war, OK? If you're going to be an atom. Yes, you. Just hang on. OK, if Sam and I are sharing electrons here, OK? Right now, this isn't very interesting. Okay, we're just both holding on, nobody's pulling. That's nonpolar. That means they're being shared somewhat equally. If, hang on tight. If I start pulling, oh, <laughs> if I start pulling harder, then they're getting pulled more towards me, which makes for a covalent bond, a, not, or a polar covalent bond. You can let go now. Okay. Um, so you can judge, like, how equally are those electrons being shared? Are they being shared somewhat equally where there's no tug of war going on? Or are they being shared unequally where, and I refer to this as like the sibling type sharing. How many of you have siblings? Lots of you. Okay. Uh, you know when your parents tell you to share something that you don't want to share? Like the forced share? That's what a polar covalent bond is like. Okay. Uh, really, the atoms just want the electrons. But unfortunately, whoever they're bonded to is not willing to straight up let go of the electrons, okay? Because like, for example, what type of, what type of bonds involve like gaining and losing electrons? Ionic bonds, right? Ionic bonds occur between metals and non-metals because what are metals willing to do? Give up an electron, you're going to be a metal. Okay? So Sam has an extra electron. He doesn't want it because that's the easiest way for him to get the complete octet. I'm a non metal. I just take it. Now I'm negative. See, here's my negative sign. Except it would be over on the right. Okay, so I'm the negative anion, right? Because I gain the electron. In a covalent bond, it's not that simple. Okay? They are, like, the other atom is not totally giving it up. He's still hanging on to it. I'm just pulling it more towards me, okay, because I'm more negative and I want it more. But, like, he's not willing to let go either. You can let go now. All right, so that's where you have to look at polar and nonpolar bonds is you have to understand what's the sharing situation going on here, okay? Is it a nice sharing, like the sharing's caring idea that they teach you in kindergarten where it's like legitimate sharing? Or is it like the sibling type sharing that probably occurs, at least between my children, where like, you know, they're sharing, but one is dominating the sharing. Do you know what I'm talking about? Okay, that's what polar covalent bonds are like. One of the atoms has the stronger pull on the electrons, okay? Nonpolar means? No pull, all right? Okay, so here we go.
Go to the next slide. Okay. Um, so look this over. Look at the diagrams that are on here. Okay. Um, they're showing you a couple different molecules. All right. F2, HF, and LIF. And they're showing you how the electrons are being distributed, okay? So take a second and look at those. Think about F2, all right? What do we know about F2? It's a diatomic molecule, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is, it looks like this if we were to draw it, correct? Okay. Uh, does any one fluorine have a better pull on those electrons? No. no. Okay, this would be like identical twins playing tug of war against each other. Okay, theoretically, if they're exactly the same. Nobody's going to have the better pull, right? So, no pull means nonpolar. Okay, that's why if I zoom in here, um, if you look at this, okay. This whole like rainbow of colors is showing you where the electrons get pulled, okay? If you have a red area, there's a negative sign, that's a highly dense electron area. Blue means it's a more positive region, okay? Is there any region of this that is more positive or negative, or are the electrons distributed somewhat equally? They're distributed equally, so that's why F2 looks like this. Now think about HF. Okay, so instead of F2, let's look at HF, all right? Here's what HF looks like, Lewis structure-wise, right? Who has the better pull on those electrons? Fluorine does, okay? Not only that, but what else does fluorine have that hydrogen doesn't? A ton of unshared pairs. So would you agree that there's a high electron density around fluorine? Yeah, so this is why the fluorine area is this red side, right? And then the hydrogen area is this blue side because it doesn't have a lot of electrons, okay? Now look at LIF, and I want you to think about that. Why does LIF look different from HF? Like, why are these two drawings so different? What? Um, think about, uh, well, think about what lithium would do. It's a little, this one's a little tricky. There's a trick involved here. Lithium would totally give up. There's that other half a percent. Uh, Lithium would totally give up an electron, wouldn't it? Because it's a metal, okay? So do you see how, like, this is a much less evenly distributed sharing? Like, even here, this does look lopsided, but it only looks a little lopsided, right? This looks very lopsided because this fluorine straight up got the electron. Like, when I took it away from Sam and I had it, right? I had the electron, it was all mine. All the negatives were here, and there weren't really any with um, Sam anymore, okay? So that's lithium, that's fluorine. Over here, keep in mind, hydrogen still is holding on. It has not let go completely, which is why this is not such like a lopsided um, type lobe, okay? Got it? All right, so what concept comes into play here? Electronegativity, right? Uh, take a second, read this to yourself, and then my question for you is how is electronegativity different and similar from electron affinity? Because those are two different uh, properties however they are related so I just want you to think how are they the same how are they different okay take a moment read through this go from there
right, so what is electronegativity? It says it up there. What is it? Lucy? It's the ability to attract at or electrons to like an atom. Like the atom's ability to attract electrons. That's part of it. This is where, like, and the part that we still need to discuss is the part that makes it different from uh, electron affinity. In what situation is the atom attracting an electron to itself? When it's bonded to another atom, okay? So when it says, like, the ability of an atom in a molecule, we're specifically looking at in covalent bonds. Electronegativity um, is looking at like covalent situations, okay? Um, you can use the values for ionic situations as well, but those don't really make molecules, okay? So electronegativity is basically giving you a numerical value to explain who's going to be the better tug of war player here, okay? How is that different from electron affinity? What was our definition of electron affinity? First of all, electron affinity means a, what does affinity mean? Love of electrons, right? And then we associated it with energy, and what did we say? What do atoms do when they gain the electrons they love? Do they absorb or release energy? They release big sigh of relief when they get that electron. Like, oh, I really, really want one so bad. Yes, I got it. Woo! Right? Like, big exhale of energy there. Okay? Who really, really loves electrons? Which group? Which group really, really loves electrons? Halogens, right? Um, and the higher up they are, the more they love them, right? The more energy they release. Okay? Well... Who is a really good tug-of-war player? Fluorine. Fluorine. Fluorine is the best tug-of-war play player. It's like the Olympic champion of tug-of-war players, okay? Because it wants that electron so badly that it always has a good pull. So, depending on how your brains work, okay, you can learn the trend however you want. Some people memorize, like, Okay, it increases left to right, decreases top to bottom. Some people like to think, like I, clearly I don't because I can't even demonstrate this, that it like increases this way. Like some of you like thinking about it like that. I just like to think fluorine and then I know how to figure out all the rest of the arrows because I'm like fluorine's the top one, like the highest. So then I can figure out, well, if fluorine's the highest, it increases left to right then it decreases top to bottom, okay? All right, any questions about that? Um, yes, and it is, right? It has a value of 0.7. Yeah, so, good. All right, uh, now, going back to polar bonds. Okay, so electronegativity really becomes an issue when we're looking at um, the when we're trying to judge the polarity of bonds. Okay, um, so here's what happens: like we just said, if we're looking at hydrogen and fluorine, for example, who has the better pull on those electrons that they're sharing? Hydrogen or fluorine? Fluorine. So there's two ways you can draw this, and I'm going to show you. They're showing you also, but I want to like slow it down for you and show you. And I prefer the way on the right, but you have to be able to recognize both. So watch, okay? What you can do is you look at the bond and you draw an arrow pointing to the atom that has the better pull on the electrons. That arrowhead is indicating the electrons are being pulled this way towards fluorine. And then you make a little line on the other side of that arrow because what does it look like now on the hydrogen side? A positive sign. And if the negative electrons are being pulled more towards fluorine, 
then by default, if fluorine's getting more negative, hydrogen must be getting positive. more positive, okay? That is what these other symbols are. These are um, dipoles, okay? And fluorine is the negative dipole, which I like to think of, like, to describe how to draw it. Now, mine's not really that great, but it's kind of like a lowercase d with a hook, okay? See what I'm saying? And I think thinking of it as a lowercase d is helpful because it's called a dipole. So we have some similarities there. So you would draw the dipole symbol of a negative near fluorine and the dipole symbol of a positive near hydrogen. That is just a different way, like these are two options for how to indicate the way the electrons are being pulled. Because if they're being pulled towards fluorine, Fluorine's the more negative region. It has the negative dipole. If they're pulled towards hydrogen, is that better? Uh, then, um, or if they're being pulled towards fluorine, that means hydrogen by default is becoming the more positive region. How come, and don't blurt out, like actually take the time to think this through. How come we can't just put a positive and negative sign there? Because that'll look like they're charged. Exactly. Because then it would look like a charge, right? If we put a positive next to hydrogen and a negative next to fluorine, that would make it look like ions. Are these actually ions? Why not? What? They are. They're covalent because what are they both doing? They're both hanging on to that shared pair, okay? This electron doesn't belong to anybody. There's two atoms attached to that pair of electrons. So it's not a straight up charge because this, nobody's let go. It's being shared, okay? All right. Um, the greater the difference in electronegativity, the more polar the bond is. That should make sense to you, okay? So greater the difference, the more polar the bond. Okay. Um, now, because you always want to know, uh, on your AP test, do they expect you to have electronegativity values memorized? No, no that's like a waste of brain space. Uh, they would either provide them to you or they would ask you about them conceptually, okay, where based on the directions of the, like, the positions of the elements on the periodic table, you should be able to figure out what bond would be more polar and what bond would be less polar. Does that make sense? Yes? Okay. Uh, so now grab your books that you have, and let me tell you what you're going to do. I think it's page 311. Go to page 311. Yeah, 311, okay? And on page 311, you should see the sample exercise, right? Okay. What I want you to do, okay, is... Um, I want you to actually look through the sample exercise, see if it makes sense. And then I want you to look at practice, oops, shouldn't have done that. Then I want you to look at practice exercise two, okay, and answer that question, okay? So take a minute, do sample exercise, like look over the sample exercise, see if your answer matches their answer. They actually explain it, so do it in your head and then see if their explanation matches what you came up with. And then try practice exercise two, and then we'll discuss, okay?